Hello and welcome to another episode of Ask Running Writings. Today we are going to be looking at cold weather running and more specifically how do you properly dress for serious training in extreme cold. So the wind chill in Minneapolis right now is about negative 10 and I just finished a 10 mile run. So we are going to be looking at the kind of gear that I use to train outside in extreme cold and extreme wind chills. And when I'm talking about extreme cold I'm talking about pretty much sub-zero Fahrenheit wind chills. So the wind chill is a measurement of the effective temperature on your skin when you're outside. It's calculated using a formula that takes in uh, the, the air temperature and also the wind. Um, and here's a chart of what the wind chill is with some sort of like danger zone uh, things illustrated. A few things to keep in mind about this kind of chart. First, um, these like frostbite times and all of this is calculated with a person just standing outside with uh, no sunlight. Um, so if you're running, you're obviously gonna you're going to last longer. I've run outside with exposed skin and negative 20 wind chill, and I haven't gotten frostbite for much longer than 30 minutes. So obviously, when you're running, you have more blood flow, and so you're going to be more resistant to uh, to the cold. But on the other hand, um, you also create wind for yourself when you run uh, in the winter and when you run all the time. So if there's dead air, if there's no wind at all and you're running say 730 miles, that's about 8 miles an hour, you're creating an 8 mile an hour headwind all the time when you're running. So you need to keep that in mind when you go out and run in the winter. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that this chart does not include sunlight, which um, I just learned this the other day researching wind chill, but actually even in the winter sunlight can move up the effective temperature by 10 degrees or more. Um, so this is for like a clear cold winter night. Um, but regardless, um, the wind chill is a, going to be the, the major factor in how cold it feels to you when you are out running in the winter. Um, so, like I said, I just finished this 10 mile run and we're going to jump right into what I'm wearing that keeps me warm when I'm running in sub-zero wind chills. So, we're going to start from the top and move down. Uh, the first thing, actually, I'm not wearing it right now because it would be really hard to talk, but is this face mask that straps around like this. Uh, a few things about this, it has Velcro in the back. Uh, a few things that are really important with your face mask. Um, First, I like that I can strap that I can take this off and on while I'm still running. So if I'm running into the wind, I can put it on, Velcro it on, and then when I turn around, I can take it off, stuff it in my pocket, and then it doesn't, I don't have to wear it the whole time. Um, another important thing is that it's it's got holes right here for me to breathe through. And what you'll find is that if you wear a face mask that does not have any holes at all. Um, it's gonna just you're just gonna get a big frozen patch in front of your mouth and you're not gonna be able to breathe and so your face mask is not going to do you any good um, if it's anywhere around zero or colder I will always bring this with me keep it in my pocket and if I don't need it great but if I do it's right there um, another thing I'm wearing uh, actually well, we'll talk about this first if it's maybe 30 below or colder the coldest I wind chill I run in is I think about negative 45 um, but if it's 30 below or colder, I will actually wear goggles because with these and with my face mask, I can prevent, I can keep any exposed skin uh, from being exposed, except for the tip of my nose. And what I do there, because this face mask has a little bit of a hole, what I can do there is I can take a, a big glob of Vaseline or petroleum jelly and I just put it on the tip of my nose and so that's protected too. So these goggles are pretty pretty extreme. This is just a regular like snowboarding or skiing goggle. And uh, that's for like super, super ultra cold. But again, today it's about negative 10. So I wore my face mask today and I wore all of this stuff. Um, moving down from my head, I've got these two hats. Um, my first hat underneath, this is just kind of your normal fleece athletic hat. Nothing super special about it. Uh, one thing that is nice, it does actually go down past my ears, which is uh, pretty important for cold weather running. More important for the, the outer layer hat here. This one, uh, three things about it. First, of course, it covers my ears. Second, it's actually nice and tight. It hugs my head pretty well, so the wind can't kick up underneath here and get the, the tips of my ears cold. And third, you know, you can't probably see this on the camera, but the weave of the fabric is really tight. It blocks the wind. It feels a lot like wind-resistant fabric like on my jacket or on my pants. So 
that's uh, that's what I look for in hats that I'm going to wear. Um, and with my neck, I also have, you can maybe see it here, this buff neck warmer thing. It's just like a tube of fabric. And I like this because I can use it as a neck warmer and if it gets really cold, I can pull it up and I have another layer of stuff to keep my head warm. So anyways, that's that. Um, moving down to my hands, I actually have three layers here even though it only looks like I have two. So the outer layer is actually the one of my thermal shirts. I can ball my fist up like this inside and I effectively have another layer of warmth around my hand, which is really great and it's not something extra that I need to bring along. On the outside, I have this like fleece technical you know, running glove which you can get at a running store or wherever. Um, and then underneath, I just have these really thin like little kitty, you know, you can get them at Target for like a dollar gloves. They're really cheap. Um, and that's good enough for me in the winter. Uh, these two gloves combined with my sleeve um, keeps me warm even down to like 40 below. Um, some other options that are popular are like mittens. You can actually get athletic like fleece mittens for your hands. Also the lobster gloves that Nordic skiers have are pretty popular. Um, and those will both keep your hands pretty warm too. Uh, moving down to my upper body, I have a really thin wind resistant jacket on right now. Um, this is, you can get jackets that are, uh, have an insulating layer as well on the inside. Mine does not, I like that because it's a little more versatile. I can wear this when it's like 40 degrees above outside and say windy and rainy. And I don't get a really waterlogged heavy jacket like maybe I would if there was a fleece liner inside of this. Um, also, it has pockets down here, um, which is nice so I can carry my keys, my face mask, you know, my gloves if I don't need them anymore, uh, and so on. Um, so anyways, that's my jacket. Underneath, I have two thermal shirts, and by a thermal shirt, I mean kind of a thicker technical fiber. Everything I'm wearing is, is a synthetic fiber, pretty much. There might be some wool in my socks, but otherwise, it's all technical fiber. So I have this thermal shirt on the outside underneath. I have another thermal shirt, and underneath that, I have this base layer, which is thinner, um, but allows me to wick sweat, sweat away from my skin and out to, out to uh, the other shirts. And so, the, again, this, these three will take me all the way down to about 40 below. Um, I haven't run in colder than that, so I don't know, but um, anyways, that's what I wear on top. Now, on my lower body, I have a pair of running pants which have a wind resistant, and you know, it's probably kind of hard for you to see, but the front here is wind resistant, also the entire lower leg, but on the back, back here, it's more of a vented fabric, so it, get, it can breathe a little more. Um, it's pretty important that the front of your running pants, especially for men, are pretty wind resistant. If they're not, you're probably gonna wanna get some kind of wind brief to wear underneath, maybe over your running shorts. Now underneath this, I have another pair of tights here, Again, hard to see because it's black. But this is this. These are just really thin tights. They're the same material as my base layer shirt right here. Um, and again, those just keep my legs warmer and allow me to wick sweat away. And underneath that, I just have a regular pair of running shorts. Um, again, if you don't have really high quality uh, wind resistant fabric in your pants, you might consider wind briefs or compression shorts or another layer underneath your tights just to keep you warm. Um, moving down to my feet and shoes, this might actually be the most surprising. I only have one pair of socks on. It's just a, a little bit of a higher topped, um, it's this thing, it's a smart wool, so, but any, any semi-thick um, synthetic sock would work. But this isn't the kind of super ultra thick winter sock you might wear if you went out hiking in the snow. Um, this is just a you know, more or less a regular running sock with a higher top. The higher top is nice because that way there's no gap um, on my ankle where my short, where my uh, pants end and then my sock begins. That's a problem you have if you have just like regular ankle height running shorts. But I only have one pair of socks and just my regular running shoes. And even down to, like I said, even down to 40 below, I've never had a problem with having cold feet. And I think that's just because there's so much blood flow going through your legs. Um, the only times I have had problems with my feet getting cold are with different shoes that do not have a kind of a substantial upper. So 
with the new kind of minimalism trend, a lot of shoes are trying to cut, a lot of shoe companies try to cut weight by making the upper, which is this part right here, really, really thin and just having like one little layer of fabric, like maybe a racing flat wood or a pair of spikes. And that can be a problem because the wind will actually just blow right through your shoe. It'll be like having a breathable fabric that the wind just blows right through. And so you could have a problem there if you have those kind of shoes. Um, but again, other than that, um, my feet are pretty warm, surprisingly, when I'm running. It's the part of my body that I have to wear the least on to stay warm. Um, so that pretty much does it for the stuff that I wear. Um, in terms of some other considerations, again, you know, the, wind, the direction of the wind will have a very big impact on how cold you feel because you create your own wind when you run. So again, that 10 mile an hour headwind, when you run out into it at 730 miles, that's an 18 mile an hour wind. And so you, you will feel quite cold. That's almost 20 below wind chill. Um, or tw uh, that almost a, a wind, that, that'll magnify the windshield by, by quite a bit, almost a 20 mile an hour headwind. Um, but when you turn around, you'll be quite warm. And oftentimes what happens to me is I go out into the wind, which is a good idea because you always want to go out into the direction that's going to be colder because if you get in trouble, then you can turn around earlier and you're not five miles away from home. And then you realize you turn around back into the wind and then, oh, wow, I, I'm really cold and I'm really far away from home. That's not a good situation to be in. So um, when it's really cold, you always want to run out into the wind. Um, but what will, what will happen to me is I'll run out into the wind and I'll turn around and then I can take my hat off, I can take my face mask off, and it's a lot warmer on the way back. So no problem there. Um, another consideration when it's really cold, and especially if you don't have a lot of experience running in extreme cold, you want to choose something that's less exposed. So if you can run like inside the city versus like kind of out in rural country area, um, you won't have as much wind, you know, the buildings, the trees will block some of the crosswinds. Um, and keep you a little bit warmer. Plus, you'll be closer to civilization in case you get in real trouble. Um, also, it's a good idea to have a backup plan if you're running in that negative 20, negative 30, negative 40 degree temperature. You know, again, choosing a route that you can duck into a store for a few minutes if you get really, really cold, or telling someone that, hey, I'm going out running. If I'm not back in an hour, you know, come look for me because I'll be frozen on the side of the road. Um, so having a plan is always a good idea. Um, over time, you will develop a sense for what kind of clothes you'll need for what kind of weather conditions. I've been running outside in the winter since I was a sophomore in high school, so I've got a pretty good sense for me what works. But I have friends who can run in weather like today with just two cotton t-shirts. So <laughs> it will vary based on your own individual physiology exactly how much stuff you need to wear. Now, all of the stuff that I'm wearing is pretty highly uh, technically advanced fabrics, you know, synthetic stuff and cool weaves and sweat wicking technology, whatever. Um, and that stuff's kind of expensive and you don't really need to go out and buy all that all at once. The two advantages you get with high tech fabrics are A, it allows you to run in super extreme, extreme colds like today and like most of this week in Minnesota has been. Um, and the other, the other advantage is that they are more form fitted and you can actually, it's easier to run fast if you're trying to do a workout in, in cold ish temperatures. Um, but you can do, you can do low tech winter running very easily. That's what I did for the first, I think two years of winter running in high school. You can wear sweatpants, sweatshirts, regular hats, regular gloves. And you know, it's not as comfortable and it's not as good. You can get down to about zero degrees, or at least I could in my own experience before I would get too cold. Um, below that, you kind of need the technical fibers to block the wind and wick your sweat away and do all that cool stuff that that technical fiber uh, can do. So anyways, that is how I run outside in the winter. Like I said, this, this stuff that I've showed you today will take me down to about 40 below if need be. I can cover completely every, you know, every inch of skin on my body and anything that isn't covered, I can put a little bit of uh, petroleum jelly on to keep myself, keep myself warm and I can run outside without any problems. So I hope you enjoyed this little look at how I run in the winter and how you might go about doing so yourself. If you would like to see more and read more from me, check out my website at runningwritings.com. Subscribe to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash runningwritings or follow me on Twitter at JD So. 
Thanks again. If you have a topic that you want to hear about in a future episode or in a post on my blog, leave a comment below, send me an email. My email address is john at runningreadings.com or click on the contact me page on my website. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again next time.